This is a demonstration of the iOS accessibility feature known as Switch Control. A Bluetooth device sends key presses to an iPad or iPhone and allows disabled users to access the device without actually touching the touch screen. In this demonstration, our Bluetooth device has three switches. One advances the cursor forwards, another one selects, and the other one advances the cursor backwards. A long press of any of these switches also enables a different function. Here we will demonstrate how to call up the Notes app and we will type a message. Here we press right, press select, press right, press right, press right, press select, and that opens the Notes app. Press right, press right, press select, and that opens the keyboard. We're going to type the message testing iOS switch control. Each time we press the right key, the cursor advances and then we select. Notice that it selects items in groups. This makes selecting from a large number of choices much easier. This demonstration is showing events as they actually happened. We've not speeded this up at all because we want to show you how the process really works in real time. If we accidentally advance the cursor too far forward, we can always go backwards with the third switch. At the top of the keyboard, we are given three choices that we could click on to try to speed things up. We could have chosen the word testing much earlier, but unfortunately, at the beginning of a sentence, selecting one of those predicted choices will cause you to lose your capitalization. Watch this. We're going to select testing iOS, but we lost our capital T. That's really the only flaw I find in this system. Here we're going to type the word switch, and we only need to get out a couple of letters before it knows what we want. And now the word control. Again, the prediction feature has given us the word that we want. Now we're going to exit the keyboard, the little icon in the lower right corner hides the keyboard, and then we scan along to get out of it. And go back. If we do a long press of the right switch, it simulates pushing the home button on your device. Sometimes when you click on a certain area, a special menu will come up. This one facilitates going from screen to screen. We've been using what's called item mode. Some program screens do not respond well to individual items and so it will automatically switch into something called point mode. Here we are in Candy Crush, and because the program doesn't have individual items, it scans the screen with crosshairs, allows you to narrow down where you want to click. If you don't want to tap, you can hit the right key, and it will give you another menu where we can use a gesture that will flick the candy in the direction we want. Here we click, we click, we click again, and instead of tapping, we do right arrow, then go to gestures, and then go to flick, 
and then flick down. Now we will press the home key again. I have long press on the right switch. In the scanner menu, you have the option of switching back and forth between point mode and item mode. Here we've called up a web page, but the type is a little bit small, so we want to zoom in. We will select the area that we want to look at, and then we will do a long press on the select key to bring up the scanner menu. We go into gestures, and we go into pinch. This will allow us to pinch, zoom in or out. We want to pinch out, and we select, and it starts slowly spreading apart. When we want to stop spreading, we hit select. Now we can't see the left side of the screen, so we want to pan. Again, select the area where we want to operate. Go into gestures. And we will use the pan gesture. We're going to pan right. And it slowly pans to the right. And we want it to stop. We click the select key. Now another long press on the right key simulates the home button, and that concludes our demonstration. For more information, go to learn.adafruit.com or to my personal blog, tech.cyborg5.com.